everyone, it's Tanya from Royal City Nursery and today we are going to chat citrus. Citrus is amazing and yes, you can have edible citrus at your house. Now it takes a little bit of oomph, takes a little bit of time, but today we're going to go through how to actually do that. So one of the things you can do, citrus is a recurring thing on our blog. So if you head to our website, royalcitynursery.com and in the search bar, just type the word citrus, you'll get a few different blogs come up. You'll also get these guys popping up on our online store. So again, you can see if you're looking to shop for citrus, you can see them in store or you can see them online. Couple things before we get going. Um, we are, yes, I'm gonna go through what the individual kinds of citrus are, but I think probably the first thing is we'll answer some of the big questions on how do we actually care for our citrus and more importantly, how do we actually get our citrus to produce a fruit? And when we are, uh, when you've just taken your citrus home, one of the things you need to keep in mind. So right now I have just taken the citrus and dropped it in to a ceramic pot. Citrus like to have very deep roots. So when you're choosing your pots, you want to go deeper than wide. Cactus, you want to go the other way. But citrus, again, you want something deeper. And a lot of times with our citrus, we also want to choose a pot that's a little bit heavy because over time, as the citrus gets bigger and bigger, we're going to end up with a little bit more weight at the bottom, which is good. And a ceramic pot or a heavy pot with uh, even a plastic pot with, with gravel or something in it will help keep your plant from tipping over. Now you can get citrus either in shrub form, which is what we're seeing here on the table, or if we can take a quick hit, quick peek behind us, we have citrus available in tree form as well. So either one depends on your space. So again, heavy pot. You don't, do not transplant your citrus out of the pot it comes in. So we're going to keep it in its plastic pot for one to two years. That's why we're using a drop-in. Citrus don't like to, they don't like the roots to be touched. Think kind of teenager-like, right? So every once in a while, they get a little bit sulky and yeah, that is what they do. So all you're gonna do again is keep your citrus in the plastic pot it comes in and throw the plastic pot into something else that's a little bit pretty. In order to get fruit, you need birds and bees. And inside, really hard to get birds and bees. So what you can do though, is take advantage of a um, take advantage of a paintbrush. And if we can get a zoom in up here, we're gonna take, when they're in full flower, we're gonna take the paintbrush and just dip it in and around the stamens. And then I'm gonna go to the next flower, which I don't have. Oh yeah, there's one right down there. So all I wanna do again, I'm gonna take and literally paint to paint to paint to paint. And I wanna do that through the entire shrub. This paintbrush takes the place of the bees, which gets pollen to each of the flowers. So now we're cross pollinating. If we can cross pollinate our very sweetly fragrant flowers, then we'll get fruit down the line. In terms of insects, citrus really don't get a whole lot of insects. One of the most common things we see right now in winter months is a fungus gnat. A fungus gnat are those little itty bitty dudes that kind of flit all over the place. Biggest reason we see them is because of our watering practices. Citrus, like most tropical plants, like to be well watered, but you need drainage. So again, that's why we're keeping it in the plastic pot and putting it into a ceramic, no problem. Um, but you only want to water when it's dry. So you're going to shove your finger in to at least the first knuckle. And right now, so my finger is down, down about there and it's damp enough that I don't need to water this for the next day or so. The one thing I do want to do in the winter time is use a product like these. So this is called a sticky strip. And these guys are not an insecticide, but rather they are a strip uh, that you a uh, super, super sticky thing you put on a peg and you put it in the pot. So all it gives you is a collection system so you know what insects you do and don't have. With your fungus gnats, sorry, it's okay. With your fungus gnats, if you see them, 
then reduce the watering because fungus gnats live in the top half inch of soil and if that is always always kept moist then you're going to find it's not doing that well so we change your watering practices water super thoroughly and water when they're starting to feel dry a little bit further down the pot you'll get rid of the fungus gnats when we talk about fertilizing citrus love acid so kind of like your blueberries and hydrangeas at this time of year so we're january february march you do not fertilize you want to fertilize them every second watering from march through to october so active growing season and you're going to do two things well actually you're going to do one so we're going to use a product called rage plus rage plus is a really good fertilizer that focuses on some of the micronutrients and it also has some iron in it. So that's going to increase the overall iron content, which actually helps to distribute some of the other nutrients in the plants a little bit better. The other thing that Rage Plus works really, really well for are things like tomatoes and peppers. So it's a good one to have in your arsenal for regular use. Again, in high season, in growing season, March to October, you're going to fertilize these once every two weeks. When you bring your citrus home, the one thing I am going to encourage you to do is use a product called Soil Activator. Soil Activator is not a fertilizer, but instead it is a biological additive. So you mix it in water, totally naturally occurring, and you water with it. You do that once a year. The nice thing about the Soil Activator is it attaches to the root um, and the nodules in the root structure and as the plant takes it up it actually opens up the cells of the plant so it means the plants take up more nutrients and more water ultimately you're making the plant more efficient again not a fertilizer but absolutely phenomenal for citrus and even for your outdoor plants too so again your vegetables trees and shrubs if they're struggling start with that if we take a look at what citrus we do have in stock, I've got a couple of different ones sitting in front of me here. We've got a navel orange, and again, all citrus get a sweet white flower, usually flowers once to twice a year. Navel oranges, this is the navel orange that we would get from the grocery store. So look for something that's super big and very, very easy to peel. We also carry, this one's called a Meyer lemon, and this is the one that right now, is full of fruit. It's kind of cool to watch these things develop. Meyer lemon is a cross between an orange and a lemon, so you get a slightly sweeter lemon, which is kind of nice, and it's also a little bit less acidic. If you're looking for more of a traditional lemon, then you want to take a look for the Ponderosa lemon. That one there. So Ponderosa lemons produce a much larger lemon, almost the size of a grapefruit. It's got a little bit thicker skin, very, very juicy, and a little bit acidic. So for those of you that love lemon, this is the lemon plant for you. We also carry kumquats. Let's pop that one down. There we go. And kumquats, I kind of like these, even if I don't get fruit. So even if I'd, I'm a, a blood... Um, even if I am not pollinating well, then I still have a really good looking plant. So we can see the variegation on the leaves, right? Anywhere from a yellow to a white stripe. So it, it keeps a really nice look. And when we look at the plant, kumquats generally tend to be a little bit more com compact. The nice thing about these particular kum kumquats is you can actually eat the whole fruit. It's really small. So think something, say double the size of a loony or a toonie, um, and it's got a sweet peel and a sour flesh, if I remember correctly. So it, again, it goes after a few different taste combinations. The last shrub we carry is a lime, and that's this one here. So key limes or lime quads, again, you get the white fragrant flowers, you get a really nice bush, but you're also looking at something that looks very similar to, well, it is a lime, but a little bit smaller than a traditional lime you would buy in the grocery store and tiny, tiny bit sweeter. Still very edible and awesome for pies and for cooking. 
So that gives you a few of the indicators for the shrubs we have. In terms of tree shrub, tree form, they're sitting in the back of me. So we have, we've got a Persian lime, so again, edible. Now, one of the things you need to watch out with citrus is citrus can be a little bit thorny. So these guys are just given a bit of attitude right now. They do have some thorns, so keep that in mind. And when you are placing them in the home, you probably want to place them closer to the back so it's not something that you're rubbing against on a regular basis. We also have some blood oranges. And that's this one here. There we go. Again, bit more compact shape. And that blood orange, really, really juicy, very, very easy to peel as well. And the flesh on that, a little bit more red instead of orange. Bit further down the line, we've got some Meyer lemon trees. And you heard me talk about these as a shrub a little bit earlier. There we go. And at the very far end of the line, we've got some tangerines. There we are. So again, gives you a few different ideas. If you're looking for these, again, we stock them on our website at royalcitynursery.com. You're welcome to come on into the store or give us a call at 519-824-4998. Hope to hear from you soon. Let us know if you need anything. Thanks very much.